Welcome. The market has been punishing biotechs for the past three months. The S&P Biotech Index, it's been down by almost 30% due to investors fleeing the sector dominated by vaccine makers. So many in Wall Street, of course, think that Omicron was COVID's last stand and Biden advisors are actually recommending a new pandemic strategy of living with the virus. Now, during this period, Totos Medical's performance has been relatively flat, but this latest news about the NLC acquisition may help the price buck the downward trend. We have Gerald Kamisi Young, the CEO of Totos Medical, to talk about the latest acquisition and what that means for shareholders. Gerald, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. As always, it's a pleasure. This was a big acquisition for Totos Medical. When the dust settles, how much of NLC Pharma is going to be held by Totos itself? So the joint company called 3CL Pharma will be 60% owned by Totos, 40% uh, owned by NLC, and they'll get some single digit royalties. Um, so it'll be consolidated under the Totos umbrella and, and we will be helping them maximize their value in the months ahead. Got it. The name of the new company developing Tolavir, Tolavid, and the Tolo test is called 3CL Pharma, of course, as you mentioned. If there's, is there any significance to that 3CL name? What are your future plans for where this is going to go? Sure. Um, well, obviously for us, you know, we've been looking at 3CL protease biology for some time and have expanded upon that with you know, our Tolo test, our Tolavid, and our Tolavir products. Uh, and we see uh, continued need for 3CL protease product development heading into the future. As we all know, Pfizer, you know, they're the leader uh, in terms of products approved with the 3CL protease label. Uh, we're the other product right behind it. Um, they obviously have much greater market share than we have at the current time, but we see that changing over time as we roll out our products. Uh, we see 3CL protease biology as being paramount for uh, basically any and all coronavirus related therapeutics. So you're gonna have to have a 3CL protease component to any drug cocktail or any standalone drug for it to have a certain degree of success, given how critical the, the 3CL protease, also called the main protease, is to coronavirus biology. And as we're looking at it, you know, as you start thinking about combos, uh, because the next potential of this whole thing uh, is, okay, maybe one drug isn't enough, maybe you'll need multiple drugs. We haven't seen that uh, with 3CL protease inhibitors, but that's always the risk. Uh, if that does happen, we know that Paxlovid, which contains ritonavir, will have some problems because it has this, uh, this sensitizer uh, compound, uh, ritonavir, that slows down the PK of multiple drug candidates uh, and drugs in the market. And so being able to put that alongside other drugs uh, in any kind of cocktail of the future is going to be problematic. Uh, and so we do see even though Pfizer is the leader today, as this thing continues to evolve, we see a crucial a really part for us to play because we have something that appears to be agnostic uh, in terms of variants uh, because it targets the active site, as well as complementary because it doesn't have any of these PK or drug-drug interaction issues. Uh, and so we see this significant potential for our products uh, to continue to perform even in the face of variants that may impact uh, Pfizer's products. Got it. Now, the press release also said something about developing a new chemical entity, but I thought Tolavir was a botanical drug. Can you explain how those two things tie together? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the big uh, challenges that we see as an opportunity uh, is, you know, people say, well, you have a botanical drug. Yes, we obviously see the value in an emergency situation. However, once things turn to become less of an emergency, more of an ongoing, uh, there may be less of a role. Uh, we see that actually is. Uh, that there is the potential for that, but we have already planned for it. Uh, and so we have a life cycle management strategy where we're taking the first product to market, uh, our Tolavir uh, antiviral, uh, and then we will be doing life cycle extension. So we have next gen versions of the Tolavir that will be targeting the active site, not the uh, just uh, binding sites as the Pfizer compound is. So we see uh, you know a future for Tolavir uh, Tolavir XR, extended release uh, down the line, as well as other Tolavir branded products to, to manage the life cycle extension after the initial phase of the pandemic is over. Okay, let's sidetrack for just a minute here as we're talking about all this. Let's talk about some recent events for you guys. You sponsored a Super Bowl celebrity flag football event. It was broadcast into over 30 million households. What were your objectives going into this event and how did everything go? Uh, well, first of all, it went great. Uh, the objectives were really to engage with influencers and develop content that we could use in our marketing campaigns. Uh, and so for that, that was the primary objective in getting all those people together. It was quite successful. Um, so we, we, you know, we had great interactions with uh, the Nigerian brothers. We had interactions with uh, Tory Lanez, uh, Anthony Anderson, Michael Irvin, 
uh, you know, just a number of celebrities and high level athletes that have become interested in what we're doing. And we're now having various conversations to have them be spokespeople as well as um, potential channel partners for us. So that was the objective to really engage with some of the celebrity groups who have the following to be able to get our products into, uh, you know, homes. Uh, and now that we have that, we're pinning down deals, putting sponsorships together, uh, and really preparing for the next leg of marketing for when we really start to drive uh, a more significant marketing campaign for our Tolivit brand. Got it. Okay, glad to hear everything went well. Let's pivot back to the acquisition as we close. You must have done some value assessments of the NLC acquisition before making that final purchase. Can you share with us any of the metrics that you might have looked at to help make this decision? Uh, sure. So, you know, when we when we look at it, we you know, we have to look at comps. You know, what are other similar types of products in the market? What are the expectations? What have they done? And, and where do we see things going? So uh, in terms of oral antivirals, obviously the two leaders in the market today are Merck and uh, Pfizer. Uh, you know, Pfizer, uh, as recently as today, I heard they were talking something like $60 billion in revenue over the next couple of years from their Paxlovid pill. Uh, Merck is talking, you know, somewhere in the 10 to $15 billion range. Uh, Novartis is also talking the several billion dollars. Uh, and we feel as though our oral antivirals should be part of that conversation because we have uh, very strong activity better in our in our view than we would find in the Merck compound based on the science and what we feel would be equivalent in terms of clinical activity between our compounds and Pfizer's. Um, and so, you know, as we build out that data set in the outpatient setting, we see more and more value being created based upon that. Uh, with that said, uh, you also have to look uh, because it's a pill, but it's dual mechanism insofar as it can handle things outside of just the hospital. Um, but it can also handle a hospital where, you know, both Pfizer and Merck and others in the oral space have failed. Uh, we see really going after Gilead's market, and they did about $6 billion last year with remdesivir targeted at COVID-19. So when you look at the nexus between those two products and you look at the fact that, you know, our ingredients have been authorized, now it's a matter of identifying the right formulation and getting that dosing regimen authorized for use and then getting it out to the market, you know, we see ourselves uh, definitely see, we see the value starting with a B, not with an F. Uh, and, and I don't want to get into too much detail because there's high speculation given where our market cap is versus where obviously some of the major players that we're talking about here uh, operate. Uh, but with that said, you know, we know from a manufacturing standpoint, we can deliver. We know from a quality standpoint, we can deliver. And now from a data perspective, we started to deliver with that last set of data and we're continuing to gather additional data to get the regulatory approval. So when you look at the size of the market and where the opportunities in the market are gonna be, um, obviously early stage, getting people early is, is definitely a big opportunity. But as we saw with Omicron and as we're gonna see with you know the next variants, not everybody's gonna get access to those. And even for you know the everybody that gets access, it's not gonna work for everybody. Uh, and so there is going to continue to be a hospital market, especially among those long COVID, of which is a lot of long COVID out there today, uh, potentially getting reinfected and having a worse set of outcomes than the first time. Um, there's a growing population of high risk patients for whom, you know, vaccines don't seem to be effective and for whom it's likely that just normal antivirals are unlikely to be effective. And so that's a population that we think we can target. And we definitely think that it starts with a B, not with an M in terms of the value. Well, outstanding. Very exciting and looking forward to watching that happen. General Kamisi Young, CEO of Totos Medical, thank you for joining us and talking about the acquisition of NLC Pharma. Thank you very much.